Hey Steel Friends! In this set of videos we're going to be looking at tension members. Specifically we want to do four different things. Uh, first we want to be able to categorize structural elements as tension members. Next we're going to explain the limit states of yielding and fracture. Uh, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to describe connections with shear lag and also talk about staggered bolted connections. And then lastly, we're going to calculate the design strength of tension members and draw a few conclusions. So when we talk about tension members, exactly what do we mean? Well, basically, a tension member is any member that is subjected to mainly axial tension. So we have a few different types of uh, members that fit into this category. So as you can guess, you know, wires, ropes, cables, all these things fit into them. Uh, but we also have things like rods and struts. And then we also have just our regular structural members, which is what we typically see. Uh, as you can guess, one of the common applications for finding tension members is uh, what we're standing on right here, a truss. Right, so if we remember, trusses can only carry axial tension or compression. And so this is a perfect opportunity to put our design for tension members into application. Now real quick, just to kind of make sure we're all on the same page, uh, why don't you guys look at that uh, truss that we have drawn in our notes. On that truss we have some forces, much like all the forces acting on this bridge. Um, and of course those forces are only acting at the joints. Go ahead and try to find the tension members on that truss. So go ahead and pause the video right here and identify all the tension members. Well, I hope you found some of those tension members. Uh, now we'll look at it together. So if we recall trusses, right, trusses can kind of be made like beams. With those loadings, the whole beam deflects. And like in a beam, we have tension across the bottom and compression across the top. The same is true in our truss. So hopefully you identified the bottom cord as having tension going all across that with our particular loading. But in addition, we can have tension, axial tension in some of the other members of the truss. Uh, in this particular example, we see that the verticals, so the members connecting the bottom cord to the top cord, these verticals will also contain tension. And then depending upon the orientation, these diagonals can also have some tension. So in our particular uh, graphic, the, those diagonals will also be in tension. We have more than uh, just thinking about these particular members uh, in our truss. We also have things like connections. So if we pan up, we'll take a look at one of these connections. We see that in connections, if you have two tension members framing into that connection, that gusset plate also becomes a tension member. And so now we have more application of uh, tension members in connections. Finally, we also see tension members in braces. So it's a little bit windy out here today. So you'll see that these braces, one of these members in the X would be in tension, the other would be in compression. So we got to make sure we use our tension member calculations to make sure those angles up there, uh, or double angles, have the proper capacity. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some of that stuff in our notes. So we have three common uses for tension members. And we said those three common uses are for trusses, connections, and braces. Now hopefully you labeled your truss member tension members correctly. So we'll zoom in on the truss. We said that you know, when this bends downward, the bottom cord is going to go into tension. Um, in this particular loading, you can see that the verticals, the verticals that have, uh, especially the left and right vertical, they clearly have tension on them. And in fact, the magnitude of the value of F in this case, and then the center one would also have tension resisting that center load. And lastly, the way the diagonals are oriented in this particular problem, we get some tension in those members as well. Next, we said that our connections also experience tension. So in this case, I have a tension member, a bolted tension member on the left, and a welded tension member on the right. 
And in order to transfer the forces between these two members, the connection plate will have to do that. So we have to design all three of these members, uh, including the connection plate, as a tension member. Finally, we have the braces. So we looked at braces on a truss bridge um, out in the field. Um, this is the case for a building. We might have a brace that's going to help. Um, this is with our lateral loads. So help bring that lateral load Q to the base of our structure and ultimately to the foundation.